Well, hello there, everyone. We're going to do a different video here. Um, I've got a uh, an older laptop here that I have uh, Linux Mint 20.3 installed on, uh, but uh, Linux Mint 21 has now come out. I'm going to show you probably which should be the right way to do a proper upgrade without having to reinstall. So here's what we're going to do. First thing I want to do is I want to come down into the corner here and I want to make sure that I have all the current updates for the current version. I'm going to just real quickly refresh this list. Okay, so here's our list of updates that have to be done just on 20.3. So we're going to go through the process and install these updates. It's got a new Linux kernel that it wants to install. We're going to say go ahead and do that. We're going to put password in for this here because it does require elevated access and it will go through and it'll do all of these updates here um, so these this will take a while when we get uh, this finished I'm going to fast forward uh, the video here and um, we'll go see what we got on the other side but it's got to be download all this stuff and it will probably take a little bit so I will speed this up and again I'll do some time lapse and we'll go from there Okay, so as you can see, all the updates have now been installed. It wants us to reboot the system, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And I will lose the capture card here for a few moments because it is a laptop and I don't get the capture card uh, <laughs> active until it actually starts loading the operating system. So uh, we'll see about that here in just a minute. There it goes. And obviously it's back up. All right, so with all the updates done to 20.3, we're now going to do the upgrade to 21.0. So we're going to open up a window here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in apt update, assuming I can type. <laughs> and it wants the password. So we'll put that in. Okay, it's going to go through the list there. And see, well, packages are up to date. So that's the first thing you have to do. Next thing we want to do is apt install mint upgrade. Now, keep in mind that everything I'm doing here specifically applies to Linux Mint. I don't know how this would work in Ubuntu or some other distributions, but that's how it works with this one. So we're going to do that. And it's asking me if I want to continue because it's got a bunch of stuff here. We're going to head, head and do that. That's no problem. Okay. So now that that's done, it was relatively quick, relatively painless. Um, uh, also, the laptop is a sixth generation i5, just so that you know that. And now we're going to do the actual upgrade, which will take a while. And there'll be a couple of points here where it'll ask us for input for certain things. But right now we're just going to do sudo mint upgrade all well, one word and let it go and there we go and it goes through a series of phases that it has to go through we hit okay and i'm going to move this slightly out of the way here so you can see what's going on in the terminal window let's get those side by side there we go so you can see what it's doing. Okay, system snapshots. Now, this I've run into before. It wants you to make a snapshot of the system in case anything goes wrong. Uh, you can revert back. So we're going to go and hit fix. And these are the time shift. These are the system essentially restore points in Linux. First thing that I want to do, because I noticed that there's a few of them in here. So I'm going to take and remove a few of them. I'm going to take these first three. And I'm going to delete them, partially because of probably drive space. I have about a hundred gigabyte partition, roughly, for the Linux Mint install on this laptop. And it's going to go through and it's going to delete these snapshots. Once that's done, uh, we're going to create a new one. Okay, it's, it's working on the, the second one. There should be one more that it will do. 
And then at that point, um, we'll be able to create, well, we could have created the new one anyway, but I just wanted to get rid of some of the older snapshots that were there, which is probably not a bad idea anyway. Occasionally, you want to go in and you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're keeping some, but you're not keeping everything because it's going to fill up drive space pretty quickly. All right, so we're there. Let's close. Now we're going to create a new one. And it's going to go through. It's going to create the snapshot which will take a little bit of time. I may have to speed this up. Shouldn't take a long time because there's not much on here other than the base installation. Now, once that snapshot is created, you should see in the window that's over here on the right, it should then allow us to proceed. So we close that. We should be able to close this now. And there we go. It should continue on from here. Again, portions of this I will speed up so that we're not sitting here forever. Okay, it's got some foreign packages that need to be downgraded back to official versions. That's another that's another error that you may see. So we're going to go ahead and let it fix that. It's going to take care of that. Okay, now we're going to phase two. And again, you can see all the things that are going on in the terminal window. It's running through some checks. It's running through the uh, cache. Okay, now it has upgrade will perform the following changes. It tells you what the download size is and the additional space it'll need. So at this point, we will hit OK. And it will proceed to download the packages. Okay, now that we're there, you're going to do all the packages are now going to be upgraded and we'll hit OK. Now this process will probably take a while, especially on a sixth generation i5. So I will be fast forwarding, time lapsing this um, so that hopefully we're not here far too long. Okay, we have got a little bit of uh, orphan packages that need to be, these are packages that are no longer used in, uh, I believe these are no longer packages that are used in Linux Mint 21. So got to get rid of the rest of the orphan packages now that we have the new operating system in. Uh, and at this point, we should be almost finished. Okay. We're all set now. I just want to double check something here. We should still see an indication that we are still on 20.3. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll type in and do system info and let's see what it says. Yep, it does. It now says that we are on 21, but we have to reboot for all the changes to take effect. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll close this. We'll close this. And we will restart. And see what we have. And there you go. We are up and running. We're good to go. So that's it. That's the process for getting the latest version of Linux Mint installed uh, without having to re reinstall anything else. So there you go. Hopefully that was uh, something that uh, at least somewhat interests you. Um, I'm going to probably, I'm thinking of doing a Linux series uh, from installation to maybe trying to do daily driver things with it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's of any interest. If it is of any interest, please leave comments uh, below after I've uploaded this video and let me know what you think you might be interested in to see from that standpoint. Uh, there are some things that you can do with Linux. There are some things that you can't do as compared to Windows, but uh, I, I'm willing to give it a try if, if you think you're interested in it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real, real soon.